This is Twit. 21 nails are not going to kill Exum. Nothing will kill Exum. Uh, but it does mean that if you or your organization is using the extremely popular, and we'll talk about just how popular in a second, Exum email transfer agent, which is the default email transfer agent provided by many Linux distros, including Debian, to send and receive email, you will definitely want to be sure. I mean, like, this is one of those, okay, like, p pause the podcast and go update. You've got to be sure that you're running the most recently patched version. Two months ago in March, eSoft performed an internet-wide study, probably due to the Microsoft Exchange server debacle, studying the internet's email servers. They approximated that 60, 60 percent of the publicly reachable mail servers on the internet were running Exim, 60 percent. So that obviously makes it without any further computation, the most popular email server on the internet, period. Unfortunately, EXIM, E-X-I-M, is short for Experimental Internet Mailer. <laughs> and after 17 years of its presence on Git, it might be nice if today it was a bit less experimental. Um, in response to Qualys's most recent security research, which we'll get to in a minute, all of the most widely used Linuxes, CentOS, Red Hat Enterprise, SUSE, uh, have rolled out fixes. Debian's uh, old stable, which codename is Stretch, its stable, codename is Buster, um, and it's still in development, thus SID versions, they're all updated. But the unstable, which is codenamed Bullseye, remains vulnerable. The problem is that there are also hundreds of also-ran distributions. And it's, of course, up to each individual distribution to update their own packages and to then work to get those updated uh, and replaced online, you know, old instances uh, updated and online. So, okay, since most of, and of course, 21 nails is 21 vulnerabilities. Most of the 21 serious vulnerabilities Qualys uncovered date back to Exum's emergence 17 years ago in 2004. Okay, that, that is to say all versions of Exum on the internet uh, are vulnerable. So we're back in the all too familiar position of having publicly known and remotely exploitable vulnerabilities in email software that may not be receiving regular maintenance. Um, and a great many internet connected appliances may be based upon a build of Linux with a publicly exposed email agent running Exum. So what did Qualys find? The security researchers at Qualys dubbed their report 21 Nails uh, because from a source code audit, they just, they just read the source, from a source code audit, they found 10 vulnerabilities that can be remotely exploited. And most of the entire 21 can be exploited either in Exum's default configuration or or in what they said was a very common configuration. And as I mentioned before, most of them affect all versions of Exum all the way back 17 years to 2004. There are 11 local vulnerabilities. Uh, link, and I'll just give you a sense for that. Link, attach, uh, link attack in Exum's log directory, assorted attacks in Exum's spool directory, arbitrary file creation and clobbering, arbitrary file deletion, heap buffer overflow in Q run, blah, blah, blah. Those are local, okay? So those are not remote. We're mostly worried about the remote ones because that's what's, you know, that's where the attacks are going to come from largely. So we have a in all versions of Exim, 60% of the servers on the internet, right? Um, 
integer overflow in receive add recipient, integer overflow in receive message, out of bounds read in SMTP setup message, new line injection into spool header file, heap out of bounds read and write in extract option, line truncation and injection in spool read header. Failure to reset function pointer <laughs> after BDAT error. Heap buffer overflow in SMTP unget C. Use after free in TLS openSSL.c. And heap out of bounds in read in PDKIM finish body hash. Okay, so those all sound tricky and techy. Qualys has published a detailed write-up. I've got the link in the show notes showing step-by-step -step code mistakes in the source and exploitation mechanisms, but they stopped short of working exploits. However, since Exum is open source and published under the GNU GPL, there's no point in attempting to obfuscate any of this, so we can expect to be seeing still more trouble downstream as remote attackers use any older and not just updated Exum instances as their means of gaining entry to internal enterprise and government networks. We already know what's going to happen. I mean, this story's already been written. Um, I'm not going to go into the blow-by-blow -blow detail here. It's all available as I said, on X, on Qualys's excellent vulnerability disclosure. Uh, but here's how they introduced their research. They said, We recently audited central parts of the Exum mail server and discovered 21 vulnerabilities, 11 local and 10 remote. Unless otherwise noted, all versions of Exum are affected since at least the beginning of its Git history in 2004. We have not tried to exploit all of these vulnerabilities, but we successfully exploited four local privilege escalations and three remote code executions. They have four bullet points. We will not publish our exploits for now. Instead, we encourage other security researchers to write and publish their own exploits. Oh, yeah. What could, what could possibly go wrong with that? They said, this advisory contains sufficient information, and indeed it does, to develop reliable exploits for these vulnerabilities. In fact, we believe that better exploitation methods exist. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Why not try some? They said, we hope that more security researchers will look into Exum's code and report their findings. Indeed, we discovered several of these vulnerabilities while working on our own exploits. <laughs> oh, Jesus, they're cascading. And finally, they said, we will answer to the best of our abilities any questions regarding these vulnerabilities and exploits on the public OSS hyphen security list. And then there's a link in the, show, in the notes. And they said, last minute note, as explained in the timeline, we developed a minimal set of patches for these vulnerabilities. For reference and comparison, it is attached to this advisory and is also available at, and then we have the link. So, in their disclosure, uh, as opposed to the vulnerability disclosure, in their announcement, basically, they wrote, Once exploited, they could modify sensitive email settings on the email servers, allow adversaries to create new accounts on the target mail servers. Um, and it's worth noting that Exum already has a history of trouble. Uh, back in June of 2019, Microsoft warned of an active Linux worm targeting an earlier Exum remote code execution bug. And a month later, attackers started exploiting vulnerable Exum servers to install the watch bog BOG Linux Trojan, uh, which as a consequence added them into a Monero crypto mining botnet. We know that's not going to happen now, 
Now what's going to happen is ransomware. Uh, and the U.S. NSA, the National Security Agency, said last May of 2020, a year ago, that the sandworm Russian military hackers have been exploiting that same critical XM remote code execution since at least August of 2019. In other words, we already have evidence of a, an older remote code execution vulnerability known published and patched years before still being executed, still being leveraged by bad guys a year later. Now Qualys has just dropped another goodie bag of these, of these vulnerabilities in, in the email servers running 60% of the internet's uh, domains, you know, into the public discourse. Of course, the Microsoft Exchange server catastrophe showed us just how vulnerable an exploitable email server can be. Now, the whole world knows that Exum, the most widely deployed email server, can now be remotely exploited. As Qualys themselves wrote, this advisory contains sufficient information to develop reliable exploits for these vulnerabilities. In fact, we believe that better exploitation methods exist. Oh, joy. Um, and if we thought that updating and cleaning up the big mess created by Exchange Server was a problem, just try doing that with the Internet's Exum servers, especially all those that are embedded into firmware-based appliances and long-forgotten dusty closets. Yes, we'll be talking about this, I'm afraid, <laughs> in coming months. Those dusty closets are full oh, of bad stuff, I tell you. Leo, <laughs> it's not just dust bunnies. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's bad guys. <laughs> and they're going to use this to get into ne corporate networks and to launch more ransomware. Because now botnets are considered quaint, uh, as is Mon Mon Monero mining. Why do that when you can, you know extort millions of dollars yeah, from yeah. a juicy target.